In Christ's name, good morning. Welcome to worship at Community in Christ Lutheran Church today, the second Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Michael Beery, and whether you're a lifelong member of CIC or you stumbled across our live stream by chance, we are glad that you are here. We continue to be grateful for the gift of technology that brings us together and for the many people listed on our announcement slide helping us make this worship experience with you possible. Our celebration of Holy Communion will again follow this live stream service over on Zoom. The link for that can be accessed from this week's Take Two message and Friday's congregational email. We now hear another council update, this time from Sherry Gamilla, the chair of CIC's Finance Committee. Good morning, my name is Sherry Gamilla. I am a member of the Finance Committee and also of the Church Council. And today I wanna to give you an update on the finances at CIC. So first of all, looking at our financial statements from July through April, which were in your June newsletter, our revenues are $105 under our expenses. So we are very, very close to break even, which is really good news. We have used almost $16,000 of our PPP money, and I wanna recognize Colleen Karpovitz and Thomas Finley for their work in getting this program to CIC. It has been a tremendous help for us to continue to be able to pay our staff, our utilities, and our mortgage over the last couple of months. So financials look really good going into uh, nine months of our fiscal year. When we look at offerings for the month of May, we were about 1.9% below last May on a weekly basis. But because there were five Sundays this May compared to four last, we actually collected about $7,700 more in cash than we had last May. So thank you for continuing to give your offerings either through online giving or sending checks into the church. Very, very much appreciated. And finally, as we look towards the future, the council has tentatively adopted a budget that will begin in July of this year and go through June of next year. When we compare next year's budget to our current year budget, we are uh, budgeting about 7% less in revenue and about 6% less in expenses than we had last year. We um, And it is basically a break-even budget. So we will be presenting that to the congregation, hopefully in September when we can get together in our annual meeting. But I wanted to let you know that we will be adopting some of the changes um, starting this summer that are reflected in our budget. So that is it for finances. Um, I wanna just talk with you a little bit about COVID. I do work at Caremont Regional Medical Center in Gaston County. And uh, while we were in phase one, we had probably an average daily census of about five inpatients per day in our COVID unit. And um, yesterday we had 14 and we have been above, above 10 patients every day this week. So we are definitely seeing an increase in our admissions for, to our COVID unit since phase two began. Um, of the 14 patients that were in our hospital yesterday, 10 of them were in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. So when you go out, wear your mask, social distance, try not to go out unless you have to. Um, be careful, be safe. We miss you. Hopefully we'll get to see everybody soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you to Sherry and thank you to all of you who continue to faithfully support the ministries of CIC. We would very much like for you to join us for worship next Sunday, June 21st, live streaming at 10 a.m. This week, Pastor Lisa and I will be off taking a week for Sabbath, for Sabbath rest and renewal. For worship on the 21st, we will be pre-recording some sections of the service and utilizing a sermon that the Synod staff crafts every week for congregations to use. We trust you will be blessed by their proclamation of God's word. If any pastoral care concerns arise throughout the week, please contact the church office and they will help to connect you with local clergy. It is at this time that we excitedly transition to worship, which begins with the baptism of Leyland Hart, the daughter of Josh and Blair Hart. We will now share together in Leyland's baptism, which took place earlier this week. We invite and encourage you, wherever you are, to participate in the congregational responses so that our family of faith's commitment to help Leyland grow and live out her faith 
is publicly made known to her and her family. Let us now begin our worship. Well, hello everybody out there on the Zoom and, and on our live stream. Uh, we're gathered, what is today is Monday, June 8th, to celebrate welcoming uh, Leyland Jean Hart into Christ's family and into the mission we share. Uh, we're gathered here with her family uh, and more family. Hopefully I don't mess up my stack here. You can wave, everybody. <laughs> yeah, to the wave to the recording. Uh -huh. So as an as an immediate family and extended family gathering from near and far, and as a church family, we will gather on Sunday uh, and celebrate in this wonderful sacrament as well. God, who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Leyland for baptism? Present Leyland G. Hart. Josh and Blair, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Leyland baptized into Christ? We do. As you bring Leyland to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Leyland grow in the Christian faith and life? We do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Leyland in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and Union with the church. We do. Stephanie, on behalf of the people of God, a community in Christ, do you promise to support Leyland and pray for her in her new life in Christ? I do. People of God worshiping together through our live stream on Sunday morning. Do you promise to support Leyland and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, in your homes, please proclaim, we do. We do. As a gathered community of believers, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. For those of you joining on the live stream, I ask you to join us in this profession of faith following along with the slides. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the life. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Oh, she was peeking. I was gonna say now that she's a, now that she's asleep, we're gonna. So, guess guess Dad's got her, right? <laughs> so if you'll just kind of hold her head over here, and we can just fall right back in. Okay, Leyland Jean Hart, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Clean her up for us? Okay, Mom will do it. <laughs> you belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons to birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Leyland with the gift of your Holy Spirit spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just a little, little bit of chrism oil. Leyland Jean Hart, child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Now, if you, we, we have the Christ candle going. Uh, it, it only takes a little bit to get the spark going. There we go. <laughs> uh, symbolically, the Christ candle is, reminds us that Christ's life is in the world. Through baptism, we are gifted with that light. We just had Pentecost Sunday where we had the flame, the tongues of fire uh, gifted to everybody. And as church tradition has continued on, um, baptism is the place that we recognize that most clearly. Uh, we have Christ's light and we shine that Christ's light on the world. So, Leilin, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father. We'll now welcome the newly baptized using the words that are that are printed on our outline uh, and will appear on the screen for our live stream worshiping community. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to the all world. Lynn, we have some gifts for you. Uh, we have a couple of different books uh, to help you always remember the gift of baptism and, and how we live that out in your life. Uh, some, so a certificate to help remember the day as, uh, as the years go on. Though I hear you share a baptismal anniversary, right? So, so that's a, that will be a, a great way to remember. And then also a blanket from our knitters that they have prayed over as they make so that you can feel wrapped in God's love um, wherever you go and drag that blanket with you. Um, usually at this time in the service, I would um, I would walk uh, the newly baptized around, uh, but instead I think we'll just, uh, we'll give the family a close-up view and then I'll, I'll get the recording as well, or I'll get the recording first and then we'll show the family closer afterwards. So... 
This is when we say, uh, here we go. <laughs> get, let's get, let's see. Oh, here we go. All right. Everybody, this is Leilin, and Leilin, this is everybody. Hello. Yeah, say hello. Yay. Okay, okay, okay. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And let us pray the prayer of the day together. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, children. As we gather today, I want you to remember way back to the beginning of the service, uh, and remember what you were able to participate in earlier. Do you remember? If you said Leyland's baptism, you are correct. Baptism days are always exciting as we gather together as a congregation to support our newest member of the body of Christ and her family. Because, you know what? Being Jesus' people is a lot of work, so it's great to start it out and keep it up with lots of support. Baptism reminds us that we are named and claimed as God's beloved children and that we've all promised to live as Jesus' disciples in the world. Our gospel passage today talks about it in the language of laborers in a harvest. So let me ask you, if you've ever been to a strawberry patch to pick strawberries, how long do you think it would take for you to pick the whole row by yourself? But if your whole family picks, it's a lot less time, right? You can fill up those gallon buckets and head home to enjoy them. Or if you're at the beach and you're picking up shells, is more gathered into your sand pail when you do it by yourself or when your whole family is in on it? The whole family, right? Our baptismal life isn't just a, a one moment occurrence so that we participate in briefly and then it's just done. It's a whole lifetime. And there's lots of Jesus work to do. There's lots of loving other people, lots of caring about other people, lots of helping other people, lots of standing up for what is right, lots of praying to do. And we all certainly do a lot of good work on our own. But like I said, there's lots of Jesus work to do. 
So Jesus wants us all to be living like him and sharing him in the world through our thoughts and our actions every day. And I'm glad I have all of you to partner with me in caring for all of God's creation every day. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you gave us Jesus. Help us to live each day praying, thinking, and acting in ways that share your love with all the world. Amen. Exodus 19, 2 through 8a. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God the Lord, called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord has commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from Romans chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace through, with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are so weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were, were sinners, Christ died for us. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. 
These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In an article from Sojourners, Shively Smith points out that in the Gospel of Matthew, the word for compassion occurs only five, five times, with today's Gospel passage being the first. Each time compassion appears in the Gospel, Jesus is the one feeling it after he's observed the condition of people around him. And with each observation, he is portrayed as making concrete strides to remedy whatever their affliction may be. Later on, in Matthew 14:14, 14, 14, Jesus feels compassion for the gathered crowd of sick people and begins to heal those in it who are ill. In Matthew 20:34, Jesus feels compassion for two blind men, and then he heals them both. In a slightly different situation, in Matthew 15, 32, Jesus worries about the crowd who has followed him for three days. They've gone that length of time without food, and he shows concern about the possibility of them being hungry. More specifically, she points out that in today's passage, Jesus' compassion is in response to not just illness or the lack of food, but to the situation of vulnerability. He is moved by those who apparently live on the edges of society because of illness, disability, ostracism, and social convention that renders some people harassed and helpless, the language used earlier in the passage. What's your vulnerable spot? Has your house ever burned or been flooded where even with the best of planning, you found yourself genuinely needing significant help by no fault of your own? Have you ever walked into a doctor's office and walked out with news that changed your world and left the control of your body's future in others' hands? Has your job been taken away from you, leaving you, if even for a short time, scattered in every direction, wondering what and where to look next? Have you ever stalled out on the side of the road with no gas, hoping that only other vehicles with good intentions check on you? Has a virus run rampant and locked you down completely because of your age or underlying health conditions? Has the color of your skin, who you love, or your immigration status ever impacted your ability to walk out of your house? We don't know and can't completely empathize with every other person's vulnerability. But chances are, you know what it's like to be vulnerable. You may also know what it's like to be harassed and or helpless. You may have lots of other reasons to feel those things, too. I can't create that list for everyone. But I know you can add to it. Jesus feels compassion for people in their times of physical need and in their vulnerability. There are so many people in the world that genuinely need help, and there are so many people in the world that are genuinely vulnerable. And as we see from Jesus, that's not mutually exclusive. People are in pain. People are hurting. People do need help. Sometimes an outside force, like a virus pandemic, comes in and rocks the world. Other times, the world was built broken so that every person can't safely and equally live the lives they were created in God's image to live. There are throngs of people who are being ignored, and by us. Sometimes we aren't helping because we just don't know of the needs of all the metaphorical and literal communities out there. Sometimes we aren't helping because we don't understand the need, the vulnerability, the harassment, or the helplessness. Sometimes we just aren't helping, and sometimes we are choosing to not help. But as the church, we are called and commissioned and named to show compassion. As did Jesus to the crowds he met almost everywhere he went. We are called to compassion through Jesus himself, who looked out on the crowd and had compassion on them. It's always been a lot of work, 
There's always been a lot of need for compassion to share. Jesus knew that. That's why he didn't do it alone. The disciples had to step up their game and get involved in the ministry in real, tangible ways. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. Compassion is an optional for Jesus' disciples then, and it isn't today. And it's definitely not limited to an emotion. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. Through Jesus' death on the cross and the gifting of the Spirit, a reminder we got so lovingly today in Leyland's baptism, we've all received without payment. Now there's a call and a commission to go meet the needs of others who are vulnerable, harassed, and helpless. And as we hear in the baptismal promises, it's our job, our call, and our gift to do it so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. We're not just words for Leilin today. They are for us all. Compassion in the Gospel of Matthew is not simply feeling sympathy or empathy, but it is acting concretely on behalf of the afflicted. We give because we have something to give. We speak because it has been silent too long. We serve because we have already been served in Christ. It all seems overwhelming because, quite honestly, it is. But if it seems too overwhelming to start, don't let that stop you from looking on with compassion. Start with a book, with a conversation, with truly hearing the voices and experiences of those around you that are different from your own. Today's gospel passage is a true witness to what the Pentecost season should be about. The season of Pentecost takes us into days and days of recognizing we have been empowered to see the world around us, particularly the people in the world often overlooked and ignored and to act on their behalf in ways that address the circumstances that endanger their lives and communities. Jesus' compassion for others is always sparked by a single observation, which is that the others are harassed and helpless, and we must do something to address it until there are no others, as we are all one like we are called to be. Christian compassion is an action that accompanies the feelings from that observation. May that compassion move you in the days, weeks, and years ahead to be laborers in the God-given work that is clearly all around us. Amen.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless Leyland and all the baptized to share your light and love with the world. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for all that you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we pray for our nation and the plague of racism that threatens, destroys, and kills. Root out white supremacy wherever it takes hold. Release its grip on those lured by its false promises. Bring to repentance all who continue to benefit from prejudice and hatred, both hidden and revealed. Plant in our hearts and nation a willing spirit open to truth-telling and healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, bless nurses, doctors, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, researchers, custodians, and health care administrators as they use their unique gifts to care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Carla, Gary, Suzette, Greg, Bertie, Claudia, Jim, Lori, the De Benedictus family, Bill, Martin, Joan, Jan, and all those impacted by COVID-19. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. During this unique season we are in, prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living, being, and serving alongside each other. Minister to us in our efforts that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join your saints in light. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, we invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. 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 At this point in our service, we ask you to think about and name all of the gifts you give to the glory of God. This is also a space while we listen to the gift of music where you can share of your tithes and your offerings through going to the Donate Now button on the church website or by writing a check to mail into the church office this week. Give. 
grateful for all the gifts that God has first given us, let us pray. Make us thankful every day, O God, for the gifts that we have received from your bounty. Guide us to use these offerings to your glory for the health of your people and this creation. Amen. As we're gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen.
cross and follow me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.